I've come out of retirement and I've dug out some stuff to go through with you for indoor gun dog training. Best training of all, indoors, to start off with, because you can do so much and put a foundation for later on to come by doing a few things, not a great deal of uh, time spent, but doing it consistently, and doing it consistently well, and uh, it will pay dividends later on. I've got in my hands here a couple of little tennis balls, and it's like a tennis ball, but it's been stretched out. If you can get hold of one of these, much better than one of these, but this is gonna encourage your dog to start retrieving and enjoying it. Because when you're playing with it, when I say playing, it is playing at the beginning, it is playing. Even to the point where if you throw this tennis ball, you're not really worried that it comes back and sits in front of you. That all comes later on, because you want the dog basically to sit when it comes back to the tree, so you can take it. And whilst he's sitting, He's not moving about, and there's not that possibility then that the bird could fly off or a rabbit could get away and whatever. But by sitting right in close, you've got him there. But that comes much later. But you want him to be a nice retriever. So by throwing this, then you can get hold of it. If you're sitting at one end of a your passageway or wherever, you, wherever you, uh, in the house you do the training, sit down on the floor, let him come and sit on your lap with him crazy make a big thing of it and don't be too keen to take it from him because if he wants this to last as long as possible he's got the ball that mum and dad really love and i'm not going to let it go and if you start having a battle with him you defeat the object so crazy good boy good boy and then eventually just take it from him then the secret is give it back to him and let him run off call him again sit on your Come on your lap, play with it. So he's dead, take it from him gently, raise him again, give it back to him. Eventually, you will take it, and he's got to learn it doesn't come back. You put it in your pocket, in your game bag, or whatever. You're now building up a partnership. Yeah? You're sharing things with him. He's going to be part of that partnership. He's got his job to do, you've got your job to do, bringing him up and doing the right thing. Okay? So that's good, but some dogs like to hang on to it for too long. This is where these come in. Because they're holding it in their mouth, you've got ample room to put your hands around the other side and encourage the retrieve to be even better. Meal times, brilliant. Training sessions, uh, when you bring the food bowl out, letting him see you do it, making him sit, raising the bowl up slightly above his head so he naturally wants to look and he sits down. You can actually put in a, a hand signal at that point. It's a hand signal telling him to sit. It's going to be a quiet sit, sit. With most dogs, the quieter you are with them and the commands you give them are quieter, the more the dog starts responding and listening. You know, it's like um, a child. If you keep shouting at a child, they turn off. If you talk to them quietly and explain, they soon get the message. Build up eye contact, that's going to be most important. So when you've got this food bowl there, make sure he looks at you first. Then you put it down, because that way you're, treating, you're teaching him to look at you for something pleasant to come. Okay, whether it be a command, whether it be you just want him to do nothing. He's looking to you then eventually. And when you start doing training further out in the field, where you're giving him long directional commands, and obviously you want him to sit at some point, turn around and look at you. It's no good signaling the dog to go left or right or to go back if he's not looking. So you are going to eventually get him to sit, look at you, so you can redirect him. I've had 50 odd years with dogs. Um, they're all different. And you have to, the good handlers will have to change how they react and deal with that particular puppy that they have or that dog rather than I've had Labradors all my life and this is the 11th one and I'm going to train it exactly the same way as all the other 10. It doesn't work that way. They're all different. That's a 2 11 or a 2 10 and a half, doesn't matter. But the silent ones forget about. But these are pretty good. 
uh, and it will gradually respond better to that than the voice. And the voice doesn't carry quite as far in the field as one of the birds. A lead. This is a nice slip lead. It's in leather. It's a good one. Um, and it's done. It's put on properly on the dog. When you're using a slip lead, just always make sure that it goes up. So when you take your hand down, it releases. If you do it the other way, you choke the dog eventually. So it always goes with the ring like that. Turn it around, get it nice and straight. That's it, put it on. So it goes up. And as soon as you, the dog's doing correctly, what you wanted it to do, you can release it, it comes off. Ideal, and the longer, the better. This is a rabbit skin. We can't start the dog and the puppy indoors on one of these just yet. But it's a canvas dummy inside. Get the dog retrieving one of these later on. The smaller the better, gradually building up to something quite big. You can get them that sort of size as well to uh, replace um, the feel of the hair. But uh, I've covered these with rabbit skins. This is for later on. So these are very good, these canvas dummies. So get yourself a couple of those. Um, and don't use them as toys. You know, you're gonna be using this on special occasions. You're gonna be the one who holds this very precious thing. Stroking it, letting the dog see it. In fact, even kissing it. So the dog realizes that you love this, you love the, the dummy, and you're only on odd occasions he gets to play with it with you, not by himself. I've covered another one with feather. This one's a pheasant feather, hen bird. Uh, see the size of that one? That's small. Again, it's a canvas. Canvas dummy. I'm sure you've seen them before. And uh, we'll talk more about that later on. It, there's so much to know about going over playing. I've loved it. I've met so many nice people through it. I've learned a lot about life as well, bringing on dogs. So, um, in the nicest possible way that is. But uh, obviously there is so much to know, but if you get it right in the beginning, in the puppy stage, then you're, half, you're halfway there. I'm to talking about the trees all day long really, because there's so much to it. But if you get that right in the home, it then leads on to going out in the field, to blind retrieves, to scene retrieves, across water, in water, and so on. Okay. And there's nothing better dog retrieving really well. Then you've got the problem when you go out in the field later on other people's dogs causing problems. And the field is the worst thing of all, taking him shooting to mess up all your training. Now make sure you get it right, don't be too much of a hurry, do it gently, do it steadily. HPR, they're a quartering dog, they can quarter all day long, hunting for the game, they go on point. That's another thing. If you've, if you've never had an HPR, obviously uh, that's going to be new to you. You're going to enjoy that. Uh, just to say, do some simple retrieving. Don't overdo it. Um, I always say to people when they've come up to have trained with me that don't keep throwing out things for it all the time. If it does it once or twice and he's done it really well, call it a day. Twice, good quality of retrieve is better than doing it 20 times one after the other. So the dog gets bored or it gets problems later on. All you want to do at this stage, sit on the floor, throw it out, or a dummy, or a rolled sock, something with your scent on, and let them come back to you. And if you can sit in a hallway, or where there's an alleyway, so it's a corridor effect, the dog's got only one way to go, out and come back. And if he comes back and gets all the praise, he'll keep on doing that all the time. I suggest doing the retreat first of all, because he's an HPR, Hunt, point, and tree. We're doing it in complete order of his training. Retrieve him first. Because once he starts hunting, and he enjoys it, and he finds something, he won't be very interested in the tree. <laughs>